Conversation will rule the nation on face to face basis when we blast off. On the turf of the court, yeah, we here for the sport. So take your mask off. So I can hear your ass. Yes, sir. Let me hear you explain. Hold the thoughts on your brain. Is your ass small? real talk. I need that shit from the street that make you think real deep and take a long walk. This podcast is telling it with my man J Defense and Skizzle Blizzard. What it do, family? Welcome back to the house, man. You know what it is, man. Mask and Cover Podcast, another podcast in here in the family. This is J Defense. Find me on all platforms, J A Y D F E N C E. Mask and Cover Podcast. Find us on all platforms, Mask and Cover Podcast. And we have lovely guests in the house. Introduce yourself. We'll start in the middle. I'Amber Burns. I mean a good end. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. And the reason why we have these lovely ladies in the house is because we want to talk to them about, you know, what they have going on and how women could be impactful in the community and in their jobs. And, um, you know, you'll see one with the community activist type of um, issues or situations. And then you'll see another one in the male dominated um, industry. So we'll start off with Amber with um, what she has going on. First of all, to speak on, and I know it's actually Saturday, Tomorrow. August. Yeah, yeah, but in case we release it oh, tonight. August. Oh, no. sorry. <laughs> we're, gonna, sorry. we're not release it tonight, but um, either way, so it's going to be Saturday, um, August, August 19th. August 19th. Okay, and, and what is it exactly that's going on on Saturday, August 19th? So this is the third year. We are doing a back-to-school block party for the city of Fall River. Um, at Kennedy Park, and we're giving away, we have around a thousand backpacks and school supplies to give away to all the kids of Fall River. Um, All of the schools are involved this year, so every single school from the city of Fall River will be there to for kids to be able to meet their teachers, their vice principals, their principals. Um, Then we also have community partners that will be there as well. Um, I know we have like WIC will be there, so they'll be able to help families sign up if they're in need. Um, CFC usually comes a hand there's like a food drive that also happens but then it's kind of all surrounded by a uh, basketball tournament that runs throughout the entire summer but um, Saturday slash tomorrow will be the um, the championship game so um, so it's just kind of something that I came up with to kind of give back to the community and it's been very successful thus far so like you said now so this is ongoing for three years now Mm -hmm. and you said this is something that you came up with Mm -hmm. so what ties you into the community first and foremost that you felt you had to do something within your community like so i know COVID was you know Mm -hmm. around that time also three years ago so what made you feel like okay me my little self that just you know work my Mm -hmm. nine to five do my day to day or hustle if you had to Mm -hmm. whatever it might be but hey listen i want to be involved in the community one to just think of the idea i want to be involved in the community and then two, this step, mm-hmm. because there's thousands of different things you could do. You could volunteer at, you know, pantries, food pantries, different things. So what made you want to get involved? And then secondly, why this? So coming out of COVID, um, I actually was put up for um, a position on the park board um, of Fall River. So being um, appointed on, into that position, I knew nothing about it, honestly. Uh, but then being there, it kind of was something that was extremely impactful because there, it's a typical board in a typical city where every single member is either white or white and older. Um, so they kind of like kids were littering in the park. So there was a, a decision that I kind of was able to stop where they were going to get rid of all the nets and in the hoops and all of the parks and stuff like that. So it was something that I was very um, invested in just because like I went to college and I literally learned how to play basketball by going to those parks um, and got a scholarship. So had that not happened, I don't know if I would have been able to um, go to college. So that being said, being on the board, I realized there's a lot of boards and people in power that make decisions, but they're not actually doing anything for the community besides making those decisions. Um, So after being on the board for a few months, 
there was literally nothing happening that summer because of COVID. We didn't even know if we could have an event, but I kind of just started tapping people, seeing what they thought, seeing what we could do. And it kind of just evolved into what it is today. So sitting back seeing, because that's the typical life of a lot of minorities, we're not voting or we don't even think of the people in positions of power within our community uh, really dictating what we have mm-hmm. and, and what's going on. And it's good to have, you know, a, a young individual, but also a minority that in, in the, you know, that type of position that could actually do some, um, some typical, some actions that would mm-hmm. benefit the community. Um, now how about resistance? Like, I mean, if you're jumping out here with this big grand old side there, like was people like, girl, you better go sit down and, you know, leave this to people that know what they're doing. Like, Oh, what people like, wow, finally we have somebody who wants to invest in the community. Like, what was that like? Yeah, so I definitely think it's the latter. When being on the board, I definitely bring a different view and I would say like a feisty view just because I don't play around when it comes to things, especially when it comes to things that truly impact the community. Um, But yeah, honestly, there's been a lot of... um, really positive feedback and a lot of people that want to be involved so this year every single school in the city of fall river which mind you i don't know how many there are i think there's like 20 plus every single one will have a tent and will be represented at the the event this year um and the last few years we've only had two or three Um, it's always been the same schools that come which is amazing but Last year, they realized, like, hey, this event is huge. Like, our kids love this. Like, why are we not involved? Like, why are we not using this to our advantage to get us out there, like, so that we can meet our kids? So I think the first year we had 21 tents. Last year we had 32, and this year we have 51. Let me say tents. What's under those tents? So the tents are 10 by 10, and Uh within each tent is a different community partner. Um, So, yeah. So, yeah, it's growing. And then... We have five food trucks this year because last year we had three and ran out of food. So, <laughs> um, so yeah. So that it's just like I said, it's just getting bigger and bigger. And thankfully, the 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 event is just such a good and like wholesome, fun day that it also makes people want to be involved because it's just like the very first year we had people getting like kids getting free haircuts and some kids their parents can't afford to bring them to a barber and get like a 30 or 40 dollar haircut every week or every other week so these kids got to come and get free haircuts so it's it's something that's extremely time consuming and exhausting but it's also very rewarding as well well now with that too like so i know you're putting your time and energy into this like what about finances and like and are you you know 24 hours a day like do you have volunteers uh, to grow from you know year one to where you are today do you have more people participating like as far as volunteering and assisting with what you're doing um yes um primarily family um i think they are the volunteers that have no choice um (laughs) but yeah um but yes we do have volunteers for the day of we did have uh, the National Honor Society from our high school. A few of the kids were here today helping yeah, us load up the nice. U-Haul. Um, and what high school is that? Fall Durfee, High School. Durfee oh, high school. high school. Yep. Um, is so there you, a Fall River High School? I'm no, not from Fall River. So it is Durfee. Durfee, Durfee is, is the public okay. high school. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah. So our our volunteer base is growing. It's it's definitely a struggle in a sense because a lot of people will sign up and then they can't come the day of or then they sign up but it, it's because it's, it's a commitment yes. um but i think we will have a decent amount of volunteers thankfully and i feel like every year is a learning experience so i've already said like i have to start um delegating some of my responsibilities because i genuinely don't stop like for at least the at two to three months prior to the event i don't stop and then especially like the week before or two weeks before, I'm just running around like a mad woman. So um, it's a good problem to have, though. So, But in addition to sparking this this plug and this thing growing, you're also you also have your own tent, right? Uh, or, or your own giveaway. Yeah. So we um, we kind of are the backpack people. The primary, yeah, the primary table or tent that have the backpacks to give to the children and families. And what's included in these backpacks? One, secondly, why backpacks? Um, 
I mean, do you want to say what's in the backpacks? I um, feel like I'm talking that, a no. lot. <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. Um, in the backpacks, no, this is your thing, and it's it's an amazing thing because being a single parent at one time, it's a struggle sometimes to get everything you need for your children. And in the backpacks, we have um, notebooks, we have pencil cases with pencils, rulers, scissors. Um, there's glue, glue available, um, sharpeners, cal yeah, calculators, calculators, everything. And it's it's such a good thing. And there's so many people that are starting to get involved and the donations that come in and mm. just putting it together. It's very rewarding and very good. It's a good feeling. So with this and all the tents that's available and things that people could do, like you said, there's some people that's getting free haircuts or what mm. have you. Why was the education piece important or why did you choose the school supplies? Because if you think about it, like you could have been just making sandwiches, giving out mm. sandwiches. You could have been hiring a barber, whatever. What was it about the education piece that made you want to, you know, actually focus on the backpacks? I feel like it's going to be super cliche, but it's the end of the summer. So like a back to school block party is just like where it's at. I love the <coughs> party, but um, I feel like education is literally the future. Like I feel like, or Definitely. just because if we need these kids to know how to survive and and actually have the tools to survive in the future so i feel like it was kind of a no-brainer um especially there's a lot of anxiety coming out of covid and the fact that like the teachers the vice principals the principals like all of those individuals will be able to be there to meet all of the kids so every tent so my, my nephew goes to spencer borden so there'll be a spencer borden tent well he'll be able to go meet his new principal the vice principal that he loves will be there and then he'll be able to get new swag for his school for the year and they have these art designs that they're going to be able to participate in and oh, yeah and tell them about the selfie oh yeah she's amazing she <laughs> came up with the best idea um selfie walls selfie walls yeah selfie walls selfie yeah. walls come yes. on now what's on the selfie yeah. walls she what's designed them herself and... yeah so they are have you ever been to the happy well if anyone's ever been to the happy place it's usually a pop-up well it depends on what happy i mean <laughs> you can't there's a place <laughs> called i mean so it's there it's, it's a it's, it's a pop-up that's called the happy place and essentially okay. you go there and every room is different but you'll go into a room where every single thing in the room is yellow though so and then you take fun pictures in it or you'll go into one where all the furniture is on the ceiling but then oh, you're, wow. when you take the picture it looks like you're on the Upside ceiling down. and then oh, yeah wow. um i'm not there yet however but um it's a start. so I mean, we built cool. these eight by eight walls um and i took over my mom's garage and I decorated all of them. So they'll be throughout the park. So, cause kids love Instagram and they love TikTok. So it's, we're also trying to make it fun for them as well. So it's not just like school, school, school. Um, so yeah, so they'll be able to make their TikToks and their Instagram posts and everything um, in front of these walls, but it'll essentially look like they are in a different space, um, which is cool. Now, I mean, just speaking to you and I'm pretty sure you know, our audience would like to know, like, I mean, it seems like you're really invested into these kids. Like, so what was your upbringing like? If we want to get too personal, you don't mm. have to say, oh, you know, I have mom and dad, but, but like, did you rely on your community as you was growing up? Like, was the community impactful to you? Like, how do you have this idea mm. of, okay, let me give back to the community. Not all of us are built that way. So yeah. what was that spark? And it didn't have to happen as yeah. a youth, but was it school? Like what? Um, I, I, so I was raised with a single mom. There's three kids and I feel like everything, I worked very hard to be in the position that I'm in now. Okay. Um, I have, a, I'm an accountant full time. I'm, I'm pretty successful and I'm, and I, I love what I do at work, but it's not like my passion okay. and I'm trying to find what my passion is. And I am a giver and I love to see people smile and see people that are happy and all of that good stuff. And I just think all of the things that I'm doing right now for all these families, I know would have helped my mom if they were afforded to her, but unfortunately they weren't. Um, so even for instance, like WIC will be there, um, fuel assistance will be there. All of these things that, if they're all in the same place, how amazing is it that one parent that's struggling could actually be in a, a position where she could go to all of these different people all in the same day and get all of her issues figured out. 
Um, and we even have some mental health assistants that are going to be there as well, because it's not just about the kids. It's also about the families who are supporting these children. So I just feel like th these are things that there are so many people in the world, not just Fall River, that they need. And this is the type of event that I feel like every town, every city should be trying to do just because it's. I don't know. I could go. I could yeah. go on forever. No, this, this is but, lovely. Yeah, I, like, yeah. I, I love it. Oh, so, do you have to be a student in the Fall River Public School system in order to participate in this event? No, nope. Um, obviously, it's the city of Fall River, so we are only promoting within around here. But we were on WSAR, just telling everyone to come out. Um, anyone we see, literally, we yes. say, "If you got kids, come." Um, anybody who's in need, just because. Like, for instance, like I keep mentioning WIC because um, I honestly am, my brain is so fried that I can't think of anyone else. Um, but WIC is not just Fall River. WIC is statewide. So um, same thing with the mental health assistance that is going to be there. It's statewide. So anyone within Massachusetts, Rhode Island, like it, it honestly doesn't matter. Like we just went to one in Rhode Island last week um, right. to meet up with Rob Levine because he wants to be um, he wants to be a part of it next year. Um, and it was the same thing. That was just in, in Providence. But anyone from the surrounding towns could go. So yes, it's it's anyone who's in need can come. Well, that's funny because that was one of my questions I was going to ask. You know, were you guys starting to reach out to other, you know, cities or what have you to start, you know, creating the same type of day? But also, who is Robert Levine? I know you said in Rhode Island. In case people don't know who Robert Levine, <laughs> you know, you're just, uh, he's the heavy hitter. He's the heavy hitter. But, I mean, Listen, you know, uh, no, I know. People in Texas, um, it's like, oh, Robin, like, oh, I see yeah, the news He's, he's yeah. a lawyer. I, I literally don't know anything else other than that when I was growing up, I would see his, like, uh, heavy hitters, right, like, the one for you. Right. That, <laughs> but he's a lawyer, um, and he did his own event, kind of like on the same idea. Yeah. Uh, but they, they pretty much just had backpacks and face painting. I think that's all they really had there. Yeah. Um, and like a DJ and I think they had a, food, a few food trucks um, but yeah so I was like hey if you guys like want to come and obviously it was kind of last minute but um, but he was saying that he I'm in contact with this marketing person so that they can be involved next year um, but yeah anyone literally anyone who's in need because um, there are even people that have hit me up and like hey my daughter is not in need she does not need a backpack like I want the backpacks to go to the kids who actually need them but can we still come if we don't need a backpack and I was like absolutely because there are still so many other things that these kids do can do even if you want to come just to have a fun day yeah, there's face painting we're actually having I've completely forgot we have Disney princesses like walking around taking pictures with the kids like there's just gonna be so much for everyone so just no alcohol <laughs> yeah, we don't want that's that after yeah. so are you part of an organization or is it just you as a single person that's actually doing it it's just me as a single person mm -hmm. um, so how do you start such a process like it's one thing to have the ideal but then what what's the next step i mean i know i mean is there like a vendor's license involved like who do you have to have a conversation with in order to present this to to kind of initially started because there may be other people out there that have thought to mm -hmm. do something like this but have no idea of what mm -hmm. what is the next step so because i'm doing it in a park and it's a city park you basically have to go to the park board and say hey i want to do this event will they approve it once they approve it you have to get a, a, a form filled out from police fire the building inspector the health inspector basically just to check off like for fire and for instance you can't have any grills in the park and if you do they have to inspect them if you're having certain tents that are bigger than 10 by 10 which i purposely tell people not to just so i don't have to go through this hurdle they have to inspect them because it could be a fire hazard if they're too big um um, and then for police, they just basically have to sign off that wherever it is, that they'll have enough people on duty that God forbid if something happens. Um, but essentially you just go to your park board, you get a permit, and then you, you figure it out from there. Um, I don't know really how it works if you're doing it on private property. I'm assuming you would need all of that. Um, and then when it comes to just like getting in contact with people, I kind of, a friend of mine had done Pride in Fall Reverse. I reached out to him. I was like, hey, what are the people that you read? Like, community partners, like, what's your list? He gave me his email list. I went to CD Rec of Fall River, asked for their email list, and I kind of just sent out a list to, I think it was like over 100 people, like, hey, does it the first year? I was like, does anybody want to be a part of this? We got like 20 something people that came back, and 
that first year we got over 1500 people that came uh, we ran out of backpacks in two hours the first year so last year we had i think we had about 800 backpacks last year um, and we had a few left over at the end um, and then because we were we had 800 ourselves amazon was also there and i think they had 400. Um, and then this year we have a little over, i think we're gonna have a little over a thousand this year wow. so mm -hmm. once you put on the first event you know obviously when you do something for the first time the numbers could be smaller people really don't know what to what to expect but once you know the first event happened you know what was the feedback or how did you know that you know what this is something that we can do annually mm -hmm. like what was the conversations or feedback that you received to say you know what next year we'll do it again yeah um i actually created like a a, a questionnaire for all the people who did participate um the the community partners and asked like hey do you have any feedback for me like what what would you like to see if, if we did this again um what did you like what did you not like all this different stuff um and and um yeah sorry um <laughs> but yeah so they basically told me the positive the negatives and then i kind of just kept it going it was also a really good turnout um that's that's definitely phenomenal man like um i know that will's outside um, too um, i gotta i'm sorry echo they yeah, can't find it uh, yeah we can switch we can switch sides um, all right you know now let's switch sides you can bring it to the middle <laughs> all i have to do is watch the dog um okay <clears throat> excuse me so now we get to bring in the lovely i mean now Amina, for people who don't know, whatever, is a female plumber. Yes. So I know a lot of us have seen plumbers. Some of us lived in projects half our lives, so maybe we haven't seen <laughs> an efficient plumber. <laughs> but we haven't seen the BHA plumber. But typically we see the male plumber with his ass crack showing or what have uh -huh. you. <laughs> so first of all, I would like to ask, what made you want to become a plumber? Well, technically, I did not want to become a plumber. There um, it is. Makes sense to me. Like, <laughs> let's start off honestly, like for real. Like, that's crazy. Okay. So, um, a quick background: I was a single parent, um, working two jobs. I had my CDL. I was driving school bus, and then, in between, driving um, a newspaper van. I was trying to make money, and one of the school bus drivers told me about a program where I, be, I can become a HVAC tech. I wouldn't have to do too much, you know. Um, it was mostly like wiring. I could be a controls person, and it would be a good job with good pay. So I went and looked into it after two years of procrastinating, and um, they didn't have a position. They didn't have any spots in the HVAC uh, class. So they said, go into plumbing, and when we get a spot in HVAC, um, We'll let you know. Bring you over. Okay. So I did. I signed up, started my plumbing process. Three years later, they said, oh, we have a spot in the HVAC class. I'm like, it's three years. I'm already in this. So, you know, let's do this. And now it's um, 19 years later. Wow. I am a full-time plumber at Rhode Island Hospital. I have put my children through college. Well, one anyways. Um, my daughter's an engineer. She lives in California. My son is in the military. He's overseas. And um, things have worked out. Now, when they when you initially signed up, so like the HVAC class, like so was it, okay, here's a program. It's a two-year program. Like, or you, you have to have a GED or a high school education and join this actual um, college program, or was it just like a certificate program? You come have a seat. Sorry. Oh, let's come in. No, no, it's fine. They lost her. She 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 found her. Yeah. There she ran up the street. He's like, I am just going to kill me. Yeah. <laughs> Your baby. Okay, so, so um, yeah, so, and then was it, all right, so once you were signed up for HVAC, and then a the plumbing, did they ever say, okay, hey, here's a three-year course, or you didn't know going in what you were signing up for? Um, I didn't know, it. so it was a five-year, five-year apprenticeship wow. program. Okay. And um, it actually went by really quick. And that's why um, now, at the, in the position I'm in, when I see a lot of young people doing things like working in a kitchen or um, working in receiving, 
um, jobs that I, I feel like they could do better um, with something else. A trade kind of, I feel like, will go a, a little bit of, more of a long way. And so I try to give them the information to start the process of going into the apprenticeship programs because every year there is an apprenticeship program um, that starts and I think it would be positive to see more people of my, um, more females, more black females, more black males. Um, I was the only female in my class of five years and it was crazy. Um, the only black female, it was all white men and me. For five years of doing this program, I did not give up. I was there working through temperatures of below zero degrees in the winter. Um, I was there working through temperatures of 99 degrees in the summer, putting <laughs> <laughs> pipe underground, um, building um, buildings, just putting pipe um, in the buildings, getting the water going, um, the sewage going. Uh, and it was all very rewarding. Um, I learned a lot. And I do feel very grateful to have been able to be in this process. Now that's today. So let me ask you, and you don't have to call out names or situations or specifically, but through that process, like you said, those challenges, some men, quote unquote, think that they were in a better position to handle below, you know, freezing weather yes, or, or extremely mm -hmm. hot weather, like, you know, and then there's quote unquote, some women that say we can do anything that a man can do and, you know, give us an opportunity. And I think you're a prime, prime example of showing us and, and proving that situation with, with being a plumber. Um, do you feel or do you think that any time they made it tougher for you to actually get the job accomplished? Or what, did you feel like some of those, because we're talking about all white men. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, most definitely. I um, I definitely, there were times where certain men, um, foremen, and more, more, than, more than not, um, it was the people in charge trying to make me quit. But I had to feed my children. Um, I wanted to prove to myself that I could do this. I wanted to prove to my family that I could do this. And also, just help others if I could, give them the information and I guess the courage to be able to um, complete a program and get into a field like this because I see the guys around me um, being successful. They're not quitting. Um, they're even helping each other. And there were times when I was hindered. Um, it was just different. It was very different, but I never gave up. And I'm here now. Um, even now in my job, sometimes I come across issues, but I deal with them. I'm not giving up. I complete my, my assignments, my jobs. I'm good at what I do. And um, I even have people ask f for me by name now at my um, facility that I work at. Now, in this male-dominated industry, and then being a female, then being a female of color, positions, um, you know, there's opportunities um, to grow. Do you feel you were given the same opportunities to grow? Do you feel like you was passed over several times? Like, I think most of us kind of feel whether we, you know, was actually able to do the job or not. I think we all probably subconsciously think that we were passed over for a certain reason, but like, do you feel like you've been passed over um, for several positions throughout that that time? I think some, some of the positions I was definitely passed over, but then um, other positions like the one I'm in now, I did get because I am a minority. Um, affirmative action, I was, so where I am now, there's never been a female in 130 years. I was the first female. I am still the first and only female, black female, to have ever been and still is in the facility that I work at, Rhode Island Hospital. 
I've wow. been there 10 years wow. now. She's amazing. I, I, I'm very grateful. I, I say it all the time to the people that I see, people that ask me questions, because I feel like not a lot of people will have this opportunity. And if I didn't go through the things I went through, like getting my CDO, I just wanted to do something different. I wanted to be able to feed my children and not have to struggle. So that's why I went for like a CDO, because I knew I could make more money. I didn't want to be like a housekeeper or... Um... But you got to stop there. I'm sorry to interrupt, but you said you went for your CDO because you knew you could make more money. Right. Where in the hell did you find that out? Like, where was this, at? like, growing up in inner city like myself, there's sports, drugs, and entertainment. Like, we don't see the small print, the articles of, hey, here's a apprenticeship or here's where you can make a lot of money. Like, we don't see those things. We only see, like you said, housekeeping. You right. Know, Stuff like that, or you know, nursing, whatever it might be. Working like, so, out of the cash register, yeah. Yeah, yeah, working at little chicken coops, you know what I mean? Little church and fried chicken. So, how did you even know about a CDL, but even wanting to do something different than I'm pretty sure your peers were going more towards like the McDonald's jobs and you know, your fast food type of thing? McDonald's ain't paying us so. I'm sorry to even say that. That's the Definitely. I had um I had a friend and her father was um driving trucks and so I don't know, I just sort of kinda got fascinated and I was one of those people who I sit back and just say, Hmm, it's um twelve o'clock in the afternoon and this lady's going in Target to go shopping and coming out with all these bags. How do I do that? Like, I'm working, you know? <laughs> if I get a day off, like, I'm watching her. So I would just research. I started researching jobs. I wanted to do better. I wanted to be better. And um, just have a family. And when my family came, just do better things for them. So the CDL, um, I tried. It seemed pretty easy to basically get... Um, get the CEO, get through the process. And it was. I'm really good at studying. So I just studied, I took the test, I passed, I got a job, and I was making double the money that I was making before. So I'm like, hey. Then when I met the gentleman who told me about the apprenticeship program, like I said, I procrastinated, but I was like, I never thought that I would be a plumber or an HVAC tech. Um, I liked to do my nails, even still, do my nails, and I have, like, flowers, like, plant flowers, and... and your favorite colors? Wear purple. purple. <laughs> <laughs> so she ain't no tomboy, don't get it twisted. She ain't walking around with no scullies on and Tim boots, like, let me go ahead and rip a toilet apart, like, this is truly a female, like, definitely. that's a plumber. Like. Definitely, and um, it's been so beneficial. Um, my daughter-in-law and my son bought a house and completely gutted it. And we put in new bathrooms in each of their yes. apartments. Her and I. Yes. <laughs> so, There's no men involved. No, it was all that. Well, we was going to right. Right, 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 right. So I got y'all on speed now. Definitely, now. right? It's been, oh my gosh, this one here. She did, we did her floors and... She redid, like, she got the entire kitchen, put in counters, cabinets, Her everything. Her son is very lucky. Yes. <laughs> he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, it's been a team effort. And just the little things that we picked up, um, we able to help each other with, teach, teach each other. And it's been good. It's been great. I wanted to say, um, in our generation, you know, college was... The focus, you know, I think we, we've always always heard about you know trade schools and picking up a trade or having a trade or you know that and understand that some people go that route, but it really wasn't viewed as a, a popular thing to do. It was almost kind of presented like if you're not smart enough to go to college, you'll take up a trade, and I think. Um, that perception was so um, dis you know 
not deserved because you know electricians and plumbers and um hvac you know those jobs are you know first of all if you own a home or know anything about a home and you, you have to call the electrician you're going to pay out the nose for an electrician you're going to pay out the nose for a plumber yes. we don't think about that you know at that young age when you're in school looking for a career like oh i want to be a plumber it's like almost like i said if you're not smart enough you're going to take up a trade right it's not presented very well and i think you know you're just a testament to you know you you're probably making more money than someone that went to college for four years to you know Six years. Be, you know whatever it is you know because it's it's lucrative in in that particular field that you chose to go into and What's very interesting, or what my question is for you, is would you do anything different today, knowing all of the pitfalls and successes that you had throughout your career of 19 years, would you do anything different? Um, I definitely would have started earlier. I didn't start my plumbing career until later in life. Um, but I feel like if I had started it earlier, I could have accomplished so much more. Um, I feel like I have accomplished a lot since I have um, started my plumbing career. And once again, I keep saying this, I'm so grateful for the opportunity. But um, it, it's just been, it has been a struggle. There were times, um, like I said, I didn't think I would be um, a plumber. I never even thought about a trade. I actually went to college. I went to Bay State um, College for a year and a half for business. And I was just like, this is not for me. I left college. My mom was not happy and went from job to job to job and finally ended up doing my CDL thing, which led to this. But um, a trade is a trade is really good. My dad's so proud of me too. I have to say, um, I love that man, and he's just like, yeah, my baby, the plumber. Proud, but yes, yes, I love yes, that. I love that's that. all we want for our seed. I love to be able to like fix my own stuff. My husband calls me. He's like, man, I'm toilet's not working. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I stopped the toilet up again. <laughs> right? no. but yeah, and then we, I teach him. We do things together. We. Um, put in new um, water lines, we put in an ice maker, um, we literally took our washer and dryer apart to fix it. Just different things that you wouldn't really do, you feel like you can accomplish now. You have the coverage, you have the knowledge, you have the skill, um, and you do it, and you get it done, and it's a wonderful thing. I know you wore the pants in the house. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was going to say, like, a, fri a five year apprenticeship seems like a very long time, especially like if you're very young. Like, to hear five years, I mean, even four years of college seems like a very right. long time away. Um, when you say apprenticeship, I mean, is that something that you're paid to do, or is this something that you had to do, plus you had to work and do this apprenticeship? Yes, you are paid to do, you're paid to work on the job site. Um, it's construction, mostly construction sites, construction sites, and you go to school. So I got paid to work from seven to three, and then I went to school two nights a week for five years. And when I tell you it went by so quick, I couldn't believe it. It's like I started and I'm like, oh, here I go. In the middle of my life, let's do this. And then I'm like, hey, I'm making money. So <laughs> it's good. And I'm making good money. Like I said, I'm, I was able to put my daughter through private college, and she's now an engineer. So just things like that, it's, it's so well worth it. So what would you tell the younger you? Because you said you did go the college route, and, and then you discovered it wasn't for you. Yes. But what would you today tell the younger you to not have to have that pitfall, to kind of go for what it is that you, you know, go the different path. Definitely, I would say think about it. And if you, because usually we know what we want to do, or we have 
more of an idea. We're leaning one way or the other. So I never even thought about an, um, a trade, an apprenticeship program, um, or to even look for it. So that's why I try to give out as much information as I can. But I would tell the younger me to basically um, pay attention, um, do more research, just think about it a little bit more, and um, try new things. Try something that would be out of the ordinary that you could make more money, have a better life, help other people, um, because it might be the better route to go. Do you think if you would have started younger, you'd still be a plumber? Or would you think you would have done a different trade? Um, I think I would have, I think I would still be a, a plumber or maybe even an HVAC, um, HVAC tech. But um, I don't know, plumbing is very re rewarding. And a lot of people are like, oh, you're dealing with, you know, <laughs> the bullshit. Like, you you know say, what? It is yeah, what it is, is but guess sense what? Sense. It pays good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it it's well worth it just to try something different. And a lot of kids or young people still in our community don't know about it. They don't know about the trades. They don't know about the programs. And there's so many programs in every yeah, in Boston, there's Local 12 that has the plumbing apprenticeship program. There's um, Local 51 in Rhode Island that has the apprenticeship program. Every year they have a class that they start, and people should just look into it. Um, just apply. Literally, you don't have to pay for an application. Just apply, take one main test to get in, and if you don't take it, if you don't pass, um, take it again the next year. And that's go for it. That's go definitely it. a good note for you guys to understand and realize. Try something different. Try Mask and Cover podcast. <laughs> but no, we definitely wanted to say thank you for the ladies for spending time with us tonight. I think you guys have great stories to tell and it should be told. And for all five million people that's going to watch this, adhere to what they're saying. Thanks for tuning in again. This is Mask and Cover podcast. You guys want to say something on the way out or just say peace? Peace. Guys can cover podcasts on everything, man. Tune in.